Hi guys, welcome to my tutorial for uh, Banjo Tooie Any Percent No DCW. Uh, this is my favorite category of the game. It's a really solid um, middle length uh, category for a game in general, and I think it's a really, really great way to run Banjo Tooie. Um, I'm hoping this video kind of sparks a little bit more interest in it, or at least is a guide for people who get into this game in the future. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about some basics before we even start the run, kind of to start from ground zero if you're going to pick up Banjo-Tooie for the first time. Uh, it's a fun speed game. Uh, there's a lot of cool tricks to it, and it's pretty rewarding to start going fast, in, in my opinion. So um, with that being said, uh, I'll boot up the game. Uh, so if you're new to Banjo-Tooie speedrunning, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that we use a Jinjo manipulation file and this gets us an extra two jiggies in Mayhem Temple uh, which allows us to do uh, to get into Witchy World at a decent pace. Basically you we need the we need a certain Jinjo pattern to get enough jiggies to do the route that we use. So it's very important that we have this Jinjo manip file and there is a lot of other resources on the speedrun.com page about how to get this. I will link in the description below, uh, if you have an EverDrive, a way to practice it with a Jinjo manipulated file of the game. I'll at least, th there will be a way to get it. I created it so people could use it, and it's uh, the file that is, and if you feel like using it or want to use it for practice files, which I highly recommend, uh, go ahead. Uh, there'll be a way to get that down below. Um, one thing you want to make sure is... Uh, just from the main menu, make sure that widescreen mode is off. I just want to be perfectly clear about that. Don't speed on the game if widescreen mode is on. Just don't. Uh, so that being said, you're going to take your uh, your Jinjo Manipt file, which is uh, should be at three seconds. Hence why this timer starts at 3.77, and we are going to paste it right here. Once we have that, we're going to be ready to start the run. So, with that being said, we'll start. Uh, any questions, uh, feel free to contact me on Discord. Uh, I'll just say that right away, just in case people just started watching. Uh, the input display, I think, will be a nice touch. Hopefully, people will be able to use that and see what I'm doing for some tricks. Uh, I haven't ran this category in just a little bit, to be fair. So, bear with me, I'm going to try to walk through it pretty slow. This is not going to be a run of any sort. So, uh, hopefully I can go at a pace that people can understand. To watch uh, to watch more full runs, you can either watch you go to the speedrun.com page, watch PG's run, watch P GDOs, watch Batman's, watch mine, Alphas, whoever. There's a lot of really good resources and runs out there for you to see if you haven't already seen a no DCW run. No DCW, to kind of clear this up, is uh, basically the uh, uh, old any percent of the game before uh, delayed cutscene warp was found which allows us to skip right to the end of the game. So if you're brand new, that's what this is. It's collecting 70 jiggies and beating the game basically as fast as you can intended. Well, obviously we're going to be using glitches and stuff to end exploits to get there faster, but it is going to be the intended through Tower of Tragedy way that we defeat Hag 1, and that is when timing ends. So, without further ado, for real this time, we'll start the run. <clears throat> and three, two, one, go. So right away, this run uh, kicks off with a trick. So for movement parts, just follow my movement. I like to bust there, and you're going to want to backflip. I like to go right up this line here and try to slide past. So it's going to be something like that. Like that. Beak bust, fall on this rock, down trap. Uh, we're going to come over here. That's what happens if you jump a little bit late. Jump on the molehill, grab the speed shoes. Make sure you grab these 20 eggs over here. We're going to need those for a couple enemies in Klungo right away. Now, if you've watched banjo 2 speedruns before, you've probably seen on 100% uh, runs that people try to get good Klungo luck. Uh, in this run, we actually fight all three Klungos. So, um... 
if you save time somewhere, you're going to lose it somewhere else. And there are preferred potions, but uh, if you're watching this video to learn, uh, it's probably not the biggest deal right now. Now, see, one thing I should have done there was cancel the shoes before I got to Klungo. But since we have green here, we're going to peck him. Oh, there he goes. Getting away. Of course, this happens when I'm trying to do a, uh, a guide. So we actually can't do the quick kill. Uh, if you're looking for a way to do this Klungo quickly, uh, there's a lot of other resources out there. Um, uh, any run, you can see it start like this. It's kind of unfortunate that uh, this is happening. So, but you're watching this for the route, not the Klungo strats. So. Klungo is defeated and we're going to follow him out that door. Now normally if you would, I would have done this properly, he would be pushing me out the door right now. And a normal Klungo time for me is somewhere around a sub 2. And so this is going to already be uh, a, a long ways behind. Uh, kind of basic Banjo-Tooie movement that you should keep in mind as we're playing here is if you're on even ground like this, uh, it is fat, just as fast to either walk or jump. Uphill, you want to jump. But something to keep in mind about the flat ground is once you start jumping, you need to keep jumping because you come to a stop at the end of your slide. So it's faster to continue jumping once you've started on flat ground. Now downhill, you want to uh, you want to stay in Talon Trot and walk fast down the hill. So the first thing we have to do is go to King Jingling here. We're going to skip text. One thing I heavily recommend while we're watching this cutscene is taking your N64 controller I use a bit of electrical tape. We're going to take the electrical tape, pull a little bit off, and I tape down the L button on my N64 controller. What this does is it does not interfere with the game in any way and makes it so you can skip all text with B and R. So right here we're going to press B as soon as the game freezes. And we're going to skip that cutscene entirely. And now we're going up to the White Jinjo house. Walk all the way there. I like to start jumping somewhere around here. And here you want to get up on this part of the ledge. And jump all the way across. You want to get up on this ledge here, like this. Jump. Clutter. Ground pound. Get over to the ledge. And we're going to walk in there. Now that we're in Wooded Hollow, we're going to jump all the way up here. And we're going to beeline directly for Jiggy Wiggy Temple. Uh, try to position yourself in such a way that you'll talk to the Acolyte right here. Mash out and enter the temple. Uh, we're going to skip the text here and try to get to the puzzle as fast as we can. Now one thing to keep in mind is there are a couple of different routes for the game. There is... Uh, Champa Skip, which is the fastest and what uh, PG does, the world record holder. There's Fak Fak Skip, which is a little bit slower, but also a lot safer. And then there's Patch Skip, which is somewhere in between. And that's what this run is going to be doing. Now, puzzles can be really challenging for a lot of different reasons. But one thing to keep in mind about puzzles is try to do them in such a way that you're always next to the next piece you need. And if you're by a piece, always do one that's... Always put a piece in if it's really close, if that makes sense. And for these, you want to hold A and B to make him talk faster. And I split there on MT Puzzle. So if you see a puzzle... And try to envision this. If you see a puzzle, and you know that there and there's two pieces up here, and one of them goes to the corner and one of them goes over here, Always make sure that you get that corner piece put away first. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can get done today.
There are a lot of cool cutscenes here where we get to talk about... I can kind of use this to talk about where, where we're going to be seeing here. So, the start of the start of Mayhem Temple now is going to be... Uh, it's what all of the routes used to follow. Uh, this whole beginning. But uh, any percent has changed significantly. And 100% still does this to some extent. But this also used to be the any percent route. <clears throat> Alright, so once you exit, you're going to want to activate this silo, which is very important. Skip the text, and enter Mayhem Temple. Jump onto the warp pad and make our way. Now one thing to keep in mind about this game is that you can bleed time if you are not traveling in straight lines. Like if you're jumping like over like this, that's not fast. You want to be going in a straight line and try to optimize your movement in such a way all the way throughout. I like to go up to here, make one final jump, and mash. So we're introduced to Jam Jars for the first time, which has an 11% chance of bonking. We didn't get that time. And we're just kind of progressing through the level that you kind of would see in a natural playthrough. We're going to go up here, grab this note, jump back, get that note nest, and into Mumbos. Now for this, you're going to want to make sure you grab this Globo, jump off that rim, up, up, and go talk to Mumbo. That was really bad positioning and took a really long time, but... So, say hello to Mumbo, because this is the only time we're going to see him in this run. So, we're going to hold A and B to make the text go faster, because we can't skip it. And yes, we want Mumbo's help. And we're going to mash B and R to skip text again. Uh, one more text box. Fall down here. Out. And out. We're going to jump, activate the warp pad, and we're going to grab the two remaining note nests here. Hopefully this Moggy isn't mean. Alright. Now we're going to go behind the temple here. Walk back here. Get the treble clef. Skip Jam Jar's text and fall so that the uh, sign cancels our fall damage. And we're going to activate the Golden Goliath. So now at the Golden Goliath, our goal is going to be we have to kick the boulder, which you can see, and get into Jade Snake Grove. Uh, we do not use the Goliath to open up the other door if you're new to the game. So we're going to mash a couple text boxes here again, which is going to be a common theme throughout the game. We're going to mash there and make a beeline right to this boulder. And we're going to try to kick the boulder as far away as possible, as his legs can go. And this is kind of like what I like to do, but I like to take an angle just like this and kick so that I grab those feathers and can enter. Next we're going to peel off to the left, and we're going to try to hug this wall just a little bit, but not actually touching. And go right towards the jiggy. And we're going to pause and save and quit as soon as we get it. And just mash A for this. And that's going to be our first section of Mayhem Temple. And we split right here. So the reason I like to... You can mash start and then mash A. You'll know you mashed fast enough when you get PL as press A to PL. So now we're going to beeline directly for this silo. And jump in. And mesh A to get to Wooded Hollow. And we're going to re-enter Mayhem Temple. This time, we're going to hold up and left, I like to. And make our way. Grab red feathers on our way there. And enter Jade Snake Grove again. I like to walk 
for a little while. Jump over the enemy, mash B, and make sure you're out of Talon Trot to talk to Jam Jars. And as soon as Jam Jars is done, we're going to roll and backflip. Ground pound to, for extra height and grab the white Jinjo. So this will actually, getting the white Jinjo first, uh, not kills two birds with one stone because you get a cutscene for your first Jinjo Jiggy and a cutscene for your first Jinjo. But if you get the white Jinjo, you only get one cutscene because it's your first Jinjo and your first Jinjo Jiggy. So that's a massive part of the Jinjo manipulation. But we also get two orange Jinjos in the MT, which we will get yet. So next we're going to go into Talon Trot, fall off here, go, peck into the fire, and miss. Go over here. Alright. Jump right into the fire. Take four damage. Cut this corner. Hopefully that Moggy isn't in your way. And you're going to beeline directly up this uh, temple. The code chamber. Backflip here. Backflip here. And for this Jiggy, we do not do the, the walk. You get in a Talon Trot, jump, peck, we're going to roll off, not flap, and take damage. So this this part is uh, this part is uh, something kind of tricky and I don't really have a setup for. But next we're going to head directly to this pool. And I like to jump, wait a second, flap, and ground pound. So that's going to get us directly to the Jinjo. It's kind of a blind jump and it's something that's going to come with time. And you have to get a feel for. Then we go over here, jump, and go to the flight pad. So this flying section can be a little difficult. But as soon as you get into... Uh, you're going to want to take flight, C up, and then uh, mash B as fast as you can. And we're going to try to beak bomb directly to a Jinjo. And then beak bomb directly to the Jiggy. So, that being said, we're going to take flight, mash C up, look, and press B. Fly all the way, let go about there. One, two, three. Fly directly into this. Let go. Turn, go directly to Bovina, and you're going to want to go right down into here. That was weird that I took damage off that fly. I land right in this corner. We're going to shoot the flies now. There's four of them. Wow. Once you're done, you're gonna get the Jiggy from Bovina. And we're gonna keep the camera at this angle going across the bridge to reduce lag. We're gonna get the second orange ginger of the level, cut this bridge, and we're gonna be heading towards the Jam Jar silo over here. Now, I am going to be putting uh, markers. When I stop to explain things, I'm going to be putting markers uh, throughout the video so you can click on them and try to find tricks or something, or at least links to other places. And we're going to go right up the temple. Enter and split. So now comes our first FPS section. Now, the fastest way to do FPS sections is to hold up in the direction you're traveling. with combined with uh, strafing with the C-stick. So first we're going to get this one. We're going to open this door, get up here, get this relic. Out here. So this is our first Moggy room. We're going to get one, two, three. Strafe all the way here. Continue strafing. Four. Five. All the way to ten. Continue strafing all the way to this next room. We're going to get one, two, three, four, five relics. Enter here. And this is a little bit tight. Get this, Jinjo. And leave. I like to get these eggs right there. They're right behind you. Open that door. Shoot him and grab those eggs. This will give us 18 relics. And you're able to enter the slightly sacred chamber.
grab the slightly sacred jiggy. And the last two relics are going to be on our way to the uh, sacred chamber. We got ambushed by Magi. And we're going to enter the target Zan fight. So, it's hard to exactly explain, and there are better people to watch than me, obviously, when it comes to how to do a proper Tarkazan fight. However, I am going to recommend you at least try to follow what I do in this fight, rather than do free ball it. So, the first thing I'm going to do is aim slightly to the right, and, to the right and shoot to get all the targets as fast as I can, and line myself up with shooting the first Magi. So I'm going to shoot there. One, two, three, four. And I should be aiming at the first Magi. One, two, three, four. I want to get around to this side. And be aiming at this Magi on this side. We're going to start here. And we're going to start strafing around. And once we have them killed in that order, we're going to start strafing around this way. And I like to be facing towards this Magi up here first. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And now you're going to want to get into C up to look away from Target Zan. And start walking towards the Jiggy. Pause, save and quit as soon as you can. So that's MT1. Pretty straightforward, very similar to 100%. Uh, just with kind of omitting a few things. Mash start, mash A, and we're back into the game. So now is the biggest difference between 100% and uh, no DCW if you're using current routes. Is we're going to go in here and we're going to warp to, um, we're going to warp to Wooded Hollow and we're going to open GGM and Witchy World this time around. If you've played 100%, you'll know that you uh, go straight to GGM and do GGM early. If you do the updated route. And we're going to beeline right to the altar. And it's time for the second puzzle. Again, uh, it's hard for me to give tips on the puzzles themselves. Besides trying to see like where you can put things and going for it. It gives me a little bit of time to talk about GGM. GGM is a very, very fast level in this run. Uh, there, There is not a lot, especially the first time you're there. And I basically, the entire split of getting to Witchy World is just um, like a couple minutes of GGM. <laughs> uh, mash here again, mash to skip text and start up again. Almost a good witch world puzzle. Almost. Alright. So... A lot of times you'll see resets after puzzles, but the only time it's faster to reset after a puzzle, at least to my knowledge, is if you're going to be going anywhere other than Wooded Hollow. So because we're already in Wooded Hollow when we leave uh, 
When we leave Jiggy Wiggy's temple, we don't reset on the puzzle, and instead we watch the entire cutscene and walk out. So this next part here is going to be us just walking out of the temple. And there's a lot of that in this game, is walking from one place to another. And you might think, oh, duh, that's simple, obviously. But it's just that, there's a lot of walking. And don't get it twisted. You can, you can lose a lot of time on these sections by not uh, taking a good path. So I like to jump across that, just jump straight towards the door. Backflip, mash A. Now there's a jump you can do here to save just a little bit of time. Just to get up there like that. Grab that silo. And we're going to talk to Jam Jars to learn Fire Eggs. Once Fire Eggs are learned, we're going to about face and enter GGM. Alright, so right away, we're going to mash B, get the shoes, warp. And get the Jinjo. Now from here, we're going to take that and we're going to jump right here. Mash B. Mash. And talk to Jim Jars again. Once we have that, jump off. And continue on our merry way. So we're going to jump up here. One, two, jump down, last one, and turn around, and warp back to the start. We're going to get the shoes again, and go right for the switch. We do this jump from the railroad track to get that note, that note, that note, jump up here a few times, get that one. We're going to go over here and get this Jinjo. And now we're racing right for the gate. And I like to cancel shoes right now. And as soon as we're in here, I'm going to hold Z and down left. And once I'm doing that, I should enter fall. I hold back. So what I did there was I fell down, knew I was going to fall on the jiggy, held back, so I, if at worst case scenario, I would land in the pool. And then as soon as you uh, fall off of, as soon as you fall off of a, if you go into your fall animation and splat, uh, if you are splatting on the ground and you, you and the momentum carries you off the ledge, you're able to cancel it by uh, flapping. And in a lot of ways, we're able to do, we're able to use that to fall very quickly, and go places we want to do. So through the flooded caverns, follow what I just did straight. We're gonna get in Talon Trot, take one damage from him, grab the Jiggy, one more. Very important. Look at the controller, up and right, and uh, C left, mash Z, and you're able to grab the rope like that. Next, flap out, switch to fire eggs. I like to jump somewhere around here. Aim up, shoot, and try to jump. And we're on our way to Witchy World. Away we go. Now for no DCW, we actually will walk out of Witchy World. So you can beeline right for these notes. You don't have to worry about that silo. Very important. And get these grenades. After the grenades, go right to Witcher World. Make sure you don't get too close to the sign and get text asking if you want to warp to Jiggy Wiggy's Temple.
We'll break that door first. We're gonna get those two notes. We let this guy shoot once, grab this note. Grab this note. And up here we go. Up here. And up. We're gonna grab this Jinjo. Down to that note. We're going to learn uh we're going to learn airborne egg gaming. Right here. And there's our first bonk. Next, we're going to beeline straight down here. We're going to jump up the tent. Getting some feathers along the way. Straight up the rope. Get this yellow Jinjo. Fall down. Get text from him. And learn uh, split up. Try not to hit the uh, uh, the uh, warp pad there. And we're going to get that note. Get this note. And jump up over there. Now this tr this is a trick that uh, there's not a lot to. You just want to be somewhere up here. You want to aim. At the uh, at the star, you're gonna shoot a grenade and beak but uh, and beak barge as fast as you can. So hold it, beak barge. Now see that time it didn't work. Then you're just gonna beak bust, and then uh, build drill. Back flip up. Uh, tilt the camera to the right. Grab that. Jump once. Jump over and roll all the way to our friend here then we're gonna grab this note here and this note here and enter the western zone first thing we're going to do here go into C up and shoot that grate split up Mash out a text, and continue on our merry way. We're going to learn uh, pack whack, and next another bonk. Wonderful, <laughs> two in a row. Actually, no, two out of three in which you rolled. We're going to turn about face and go directly towards. This. You don't need to get that honeycomb. Not required for the category, but I like to get it there. And go right to here. And as soon as the uh, sparklies turn white, you can uh, switch. We're gonna go as Kazooie right there as fast as we can. Use this. Jump up and over. Now you're just gonna do the same thing as Kazooie. Go over here, get right on the button. A perfect, easy every time. <laughs> All right, now we're going to leave as Kazooie. And enter the Crazy Castle Stockade. We're gonna hold A and B, and we're going to skip the rules. Make sure you don't listen to the rules or eat. Uh, 
fair amount of time loss. Now the goal here is just to get 30, and we're going to use a little exploit here as soon as we hit 30. Which should be faster than this. Wow. Alright. Once you have 30, I like to go over here by this door, line yourself up, and start uh, pooping eggs into yourself. Uh, because the minigame doesn't wants you to be able to use as many eggs as you want, you're able to do this, but you're also able to recollect them. So, you're gaining eggs as you get rid of them. So we do this, it's usually nice to fill up, but I didn't get anywhere close. And then the next thing you want to do is try to die as fast as possible. So we're going to switch to grenades and uh, die. We do not want to play again. Uh, hold Z, select grenades, and die. Next we're going to recombine with Banjo right away. And enter the crazy castle one more time. And enter this one. No, we do not want to hear the rolls. And balloon. Balloons galore. We need to get all the way up to 50. 50 balloons is the requirement. And when the game's about done, you want to start heading back towards the entrance. It's very important that the closer you are to the entrance, the faster you can leave, the better it goes, because the jiggy's outside anyway. So once that's over, no, we don't want to play again. We're going to hit Z, and we're going to get it. Peace out. So we're going to leave the crazy castle. So I like to hold R here as we get out of Talon Trot, which will turn us around and mash A once we're completely landed. And mash Z. Oh. And try not to get text from Zoggy. Next, go directly up the ladder. We're going to jump off here, roll, jump one more time. Roll and backflip in this specific spot. And into Wumbas we go. Now this is be the first time we've been to Wumbas, so it's going to take us out of town and try it on its own. So we're going to mash B, hold A and B. Yes, we do. Mash B again. And roll into the pond. Now we're the van, and we're going to want to jump right back into the loading zone after we skip those two text box. So now is the van. We're going to want to warp right back to the entrance. And we're going to grab this Jinjo. Jinjo! 
And now we're going to make our way completely back around the level. Uh, we're able to cut this corner a little bit more. And we're heading directly towards the treble clef that's located in the space zone. Grab that. And right back out we go. Make sure to grab all of the notes on our way. And we're going to now open up the inferno. Once we've entered the Inferno, we can actually make a line directly for this warp pad. And we're going to be done with the van. So we're going to warp right back to Wumba. And we're going to enter the hut. And make sure to grab this gin uh, Globo. And go back. Next, we'll warp right back to the Inferno, just where we came from, right after we skip that text. We're just going to wander out back here. And back to the Inferno. Run towards it like this and jump. We're going to get these boots, our shoes. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. <clears throat> and get up here. So the trick behind this is slope abuse. So normally you'd need to get this jiggy in other matter in other ways by splitting up. We're going to backflip up onto this, and we're going to get into Talon Trot and hold back towards the middle of the spire. So we're going to backflip up, get into Talon Trot, hold towards the spire, and jump. Next, I'm going to hold this way and jump back off towards the entrance. That's pretty unconventional. Normally what you're going to want to do is land over here, uh, splat off of this, Land here one more time, take damage, and exit. We jump out here, up the ladder, now once we're up at the top of the dive of death we're going to roll and jump, to the other side, jump. I like to jump and peck and fall onto this set of notes right there. Dive to get the other set and we just get up and now we're going to enter the Cave of Horrors. So the Cave of Horrors has two kind of scary jumps. We jump here and the second jump is going to be to that other side or you can do that, or you can just walk around if you just feel like it. Jump saves a little bit of time, though. So, the reason we want two health going into this is we want to run directly up to this Jinjo. Just like this, poop one grenade, have it set us that way, and use the other grenade that way. So we're able to break the cage while it's pushing us towards the Jinjo. So once we're done with that, we're going to leave Witchy World. Wasn't that fun? Now it's time to go back and do the JRL puzzle. And since we are leaving this way, we're going to hop in here, go back to Wooded Hollow, and time for another puzzle.
That's a pretty solid puzzle. An 81's pretty good. I usually will settle for like an 81's like pretty decent though. So we split here. And this is going to be our first hard reset. So as soon as the uh, screen goes white you're going to want to count to 3 and you can reset after that. Mm. Or if you want to be safe like I am, you can wait for the picture of the next scene to come up and then you're completely safe. One. Two, three. I wait until that scene pops up and I reset. If you reset too early, JRL will not be opened and you'll have a very bad time. So now a very important thing to remember about this split. Do not forget Royston. We're going to make a trip back to Spiral Mountain. So once the T bottom of the T hits the bridge, we can mash start and mash A. To enter our file again, PL. Once we're here, talent trot, get right back into it and go this way. Alright. Next, we're gonna want to go straight through here. And because we uh, skipped the Klungo trigger cutscene, we're gonna go up here and jump around it. But you do not have to go all the way up there like that. So what I like to do is get back up on here. Well, Come on, get it back up on here, jump right towards the walk, the rock, build drill, grab the fish, and now we're going to go back to our same spot. I like to stand somewhere like right here, back flip up, back go and flap, and back to the other side. So you can save a little bit of time or lose a little bit of time on this specific part by how you set up your camera with this. So you want to jump in at kind of a specific spot. So I got a pretty good camera there, but I did not ride up the slope into Talon Trot. Which is the ideal way, but we got pretty fast text because the game is not lagging super hard. So we're going to get back in Talon Trot and continue on our merry way. Beeline for the silo. And we're going to go to Plateau. So I'm going to hold C left because I want to turn around right away. And I'm going to roll towards the uh, towards this sign here. Back flip up. And on this part of the... Uh, you can kind of see right here how I did that. This part of the sign angles down a little bit. So it's possible to get up there. So if you're like right here. You can get up. You're going to get that. Second note pile. Flap and build drill. Another Jinjo. This route does get all of the Jinjos. Just like 100%. We're gonna split up Banjo and Kazooie again. And I like to go straight for this black mark right here. I like to go straight for that and jump up. Switch back. Take Kazooie directly up here right towards this note. At this point you should have exactly 260 notes. Get Banjo. We have to talk to Jam Jars now. And back towards uh, JRL, which is this way. Gonna jump up the hill. Directly towards this silo. 
Activate it, and you're going to want to fall down right about here. Flap onto the switch to get the bridge up. Back in town, Trot, and we're going to jump up the stairs. And enter the level. Beautiful. So the first part of this is pretty tight. And in like in like a this is a pretty cool runway. You're gonna want to get up here, and you're gonna want to aim right about here. So once you're aiming about there, you shoot a grenade and split up. Now obviously you want to do that without doing C up, but that's where you want to be aiming for. You're gonna switch to Kazooie, shoot one grenade towards there. We're gonna jump to this little spire, jump over. You need this note to learn wing whack. Get that other doubloon and head this way. Get this first doubloon and talk to Jam Jars. And we're gonna make a clockwise circle around to get the doubloons, so we're heading back in the exit. Back towards the exit of the room. Otherwise, it's actually pretty easy to get lost in that room. We're gonna jump across, and we're gonna enter. Right away, we're going to get the shock spring pad, which is right behind the counter here. Jump up here, flutter over to the green Jinjo. Jump across, grab these notes, and die. Once you recombine, once you revive, you're going to recombine with Banjo, enter Talon Trap, and enter Jollies. So, for Jollies movement, it's very important, so you want to jump on this desk. I like to go here, shoot a grenade, and get into Talon Trot. So we break Jolly's door, and we're already in Talon Trot again. And we'll enter the room and talk to Jam Jars again. <coughs> the Ancient. Back here. All right, 300 notes. Shouts to Mumbo Token. <laughs> All right. Don't do that. Grab this first doubloon on your way out. Grab this next one. And grab this one. So once you're off here, once you're in the water, there's a specific thing you want to look for, and it's very easy to see. If you look at the bottom of my reticle, there's almost an arrow pointing exactly where I want to go to. So I'm going to swim across by flapping. Once I'm about here, I like to jump up and wink and uh, rat tat rat. And you're going to use slope abuse to make sure your shadow is not visible. And then you're going to fall off. Grab these four doubloons, and I like to switch to ice eggs right here. You should be at 13 doubloons before you enter even any further. Next we're gonna head directly towards this octopus. When you're in the water it's important to keep in mind that it's it's it reduces lag tag or reticle off screen which you can do by pressing C down. Aim for the octopus's eyes and once he's frozen you can swim around him or straight through him like this and we're gonna enter Atlantis. So as soon as you enter Atlantis, you're going to want to swim towards the warp pad. But as you're swimming towards the warp pad, it's very important to keep in mind which... Uh, there's a lot of things going on screen all at once right now. So once you enter Atlantis, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind. The first is, take note if that see me, seen just above the Jinjo's text, has a uh, Jinjo, has eggs or a, a Jiggy. If it has a Jiggy, you're going to need to get it sooner. The next is to start making your way towards... The warp pad, like so, in C up. While you're on your way there, turn your camera slightly, just like this, to try to make out the uh, the Greek symbols on top of the crispy bacon door. You can start to make them out. As you can see, this one is uh, Omega Pi Delta Sigma Omega Pi. So once we have that in mind, we're going to finish up, go get this, and we're going to grab this note, and enter. I'm going to swim directly up. This is kind of a cool movement trick in the game. Is we're going to go towards here, jump, and ground pound up to the top. Now if you don't want to do that or it doesn't really matter, you can just grab and get up there like that. But 
there is a faster movement method. Once town torpedoes. Another bonk. That's three bonks, dude. Jam Jars knows I'm making a guide right now. So each bonk is a little bit different, uh, but it's somewhere around four to five seconds every time he bonks. So because that Jiggy was out here, we're going to get it right away. So we're going to mash with our new Talon Torpedo, go into C up, and find him. He's up here. And if the Jiggy is out here, I like to get this Trouble Clef with Kazooie, so we don't have to worry about it later. If he's not, I'll show you where we would get him later. Next, we're going to go right up here. And the other place that that Jiggy can be, if that Jiggy is not there, this is very important, by the way. This is very important. If that Jiggy is not out there, then he, it is in here. And this is where you would Talon Torpedo. Right up here to get him it from him. But he has eggs this time. So once you would have that, you would go up here. And what I like to aim for... Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and aim. This little uh, this little um, angle is a good uh, good spot to look for uh, the uh, entrance to Humba's tent, and that's what I look for every time. I like to surface, mash B. We're gonna give our globo to Humba, mash B again. So right from here, the fastest way to do it is jump once and ground pound right into it. Now that we're the sub, we're going to turn around and leave as fast as we can. Turn around, and peace out. Get into C up as fast as we can again. Uh, remove the reticle. And this is very important when now we have to enter in the code. So, just so you can see... Pi is over there. I'll, I'll, I'll go up there so you guys can see. So, that's why we want to be in C up. Okay. Pi is this one. Omega. Delta. And Sigma. So our code was Omega. Pi. Delta. Sigma. Omega, Omega, and Pi. So since we already got the Treble Clef, I normally wouldn't worry about this because the Jiggy was out here, but if the Jiggy was by Humba, you're going to want to go over here, shoot this, and get the Treble Clef from him. Next, when we're about to take this corner, you press B. Our sonar will freeze the octopus for some reason. And now at this point, there's four locations that this Jinjo box can be. It can be anywhere in the room. And th that's actually the worst spot for it. So it can be here, that corner, that corner, or this corner. So we're going to shoot that box and get this Jinjo. Reminder, that can move and it probably won't be in the same place as your, your first run as it is right there. And we'll split right there. Next, uh, you're going to want to sonar right away, go into C up, remove the reticle and go out into the uh, uh, sea bottom. So, the Lord Wu Fact Fact Fight can be on any of these lockers. It is completely RNG. The best locker is that one. This is not a great locker. We're gonna go in here, and we're gonna fight Lord Wu Fact Fact. Okay, I'm gonna pause right away at the beginning of this fight. Because there's a couple of things that I think are really important, and I don't know if there's like a lot of great fact fact fights out there that like really teach you what you should do with this boss fight. And I feel like I, I really do have a firm grasp on what I'm doing. So we're going to skip text. I'm going to pause. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to swim to the right. Positioning is everything in this boss fight, and that it, it, it's so much everything. Knowing what fact fact does at every part of the phase is so important. He is going to go back and forth in the room. And no matter what, after each attack, he is going to spin a certain way and try to continue that trajectory until he gets to the other side. If he is almost to the other side and you hit him, he is still going to try to get to that other side until he's actually there and turns around and does an attack. Very, very important to keep in mind. 
after the first hit, a small brief cutscene will play and he'll be turned around and trying to go a different way and you have to adjust for that. So what I like to do is every time go off to the right side, get a little bit above him and shoot all three boils, whether they're there or not, just before I can even see if they're there, I'm shooting at them. So I'll try to I'll try to explain more as I go, but try to be a little bit above him and away from him so he does not hit you when he turns around. So the boil is iron over here, so I'm going to go above and over and shoot all of the boils on this side. And we got one. No boils. Ready to turn around. Shoot that one. So we got 3-3, three, three, which is a good pattern. So it would have been really good if we could have gotten that shot there, but we didn't. Finish shooting that, and finish shooting that. So once he's done, he's going to try to keep swimming forward now, which is why I'm trying to get ahead of him. So I'm going to, after I make the second shot, you can do two shots until he's at four and he's going to stop. And I'm going to position myself in front of him, so he's going to be swimming towards me. And you can shoot him until he's at two, and he's going to be invulnerable. Okay. And you can shoot him one more time. And he's going to be invulnerable again. And as soon as that breaks, you can shoot again and he should be dead. Now obviously that wasn't the fastest fight and there I, there was a lot of mistakes. But I hope from the general gist of the fight. Uh, and obviously ask me anytime. Or any of the other 2E runners that can give you some tips on Fact Fact. Uh, next you have to go down and swim, get this jiggy. and exit the fight. Next we're going to be going to the sub mini game, which is going to be from us, it's going to be to our left and down. So we're going to swim towards this, and it's going to be at the opposite end of the room that we entered it from. Down here. So this fight, there's not a whole lot to it, except for where we want to end on. So the, we want to end where the jiggy spawns. So we're going to get to 60 as fast as we can and try to be on that pedestal when the game is over. I like to remove my radical. No real rhyme or reason, I just do it. And instead, don't spam missiles. I don't know if it actually legs the game, but don't spam missiles, please. Take calculated shots every time. It's just, it's not that hard. <laughs> do not spam missiles, please. Even if it doesn't like the game, it kind of looks like it. We want to go back to this pedestal when you have 60. You want to be directly in the center. And you want to be towards this direction. Because if you're looking this way when the game ends, there isn't usually mines that spawn behind you and cause more lag. So try to be in this spot, and we're going to mash B again here. After this. So hold down A and B. We're going to mash start, and save and quit. <clears throat> Next up is Klungo 2. So, at the Klungo 2 split, I like to go in the talent trap here. And we're going to go back and take care of this Jinjo right away. So now that we have Talon Torpedo, we're able to get this. So I like to jump in the water here. Actually, I like to get in the water in such a way that I'm very close to the edge. So when I'm done, when I'm done, I can leave quickly. Get in a Talon Torpedo. R aim over to the Kazooie head. Get the Jinjo. Mash B. Get up. And get out of the water as fast as you can. Back towards the entrance. We'll see you in a little bit, Klungo. Start jumping towards the, uh, if you're already jumping, keep jumping. Otherwise you can walk right towards the silo. Open it up. And we're gonna work to Pine Grove.
So we're in Pine Grove, turn the camera. And we're heading directly for the water, where we're going to grab some notes underneath. Grab these notes, we should be at 340. And off we go. Now Klungo 2, again like any of the other fights, uh, you can actually do a few more things to be prepared for the pushes and such that I'll try to go over, but I'm not too worried about covering the first two Klungos, because uh, you'll see them a lot in other categories, and hopefully you'll have seen them if you're thinking about running this category. And, yeah. So hopefully you're watching this more for the route and not the specific uh, Klungo fights. So Red Potion is pretty easy to talk about, though, and this is a pretty good way to set up this uh, trick. So we're going to get him right away. I like to go in to see up and shoot these as they come. And while Klungo is throwing his second set, he'll throw seven. I poop one egg here. And you want to be ending right where I'm at, uh, kind of on the right side of the trail, because that's where he's going to push from. It's not from the middle like the first one. He pushes from the right side. So this should be a pretty good spot. And obviously you can do that better and be in talent shot and stuff, but he's going to push from this side. And I should have been a little bit more towards the center, but I'm going to be pretty close to the exit and split. Now we're going to go right to Clockworks. And now the real fun begins. <laughs> Once we have Clockworks, we're going to mash B, get out of here. We're going to switch to Clockworks, Peck, get up there, once we're here, we're going to turn around and we're going to do one shot, this is important. We're going to use this shot to get that Jinjo, that is important that we're taking that shot right now. And it's not because it's faster to get that Jinjo that way, but we need to use a shot before we Clockwork Warp. We're going to go back to Wooded, Wooded Hollow. The first Clockwork shot you do gives you Jam Jar's text, and it's impossible to uh, Clockwork Warp when he gives you that text. So back into Mayhem Temple. And this will be the first, like, kind of major trick I'm going to talk a lot about here. So beeline right for this pad. Get up. Couple flaps. And... All the way over here. Now it's important, and 100% you can grab this Cheeto page, but you definitely don't want to grab it in NoDCW because if you grab a Cheeto page, you're going to have to watch a cutscene that you normally wouldn't watch. So once you're up here, you're going to want to jump off, flap, and re-grab the ledge. Hold R to kind of get the camera positions behind you, and you want to line up the left side of this crack with uh, the uh, palm of Banjo's hand. So if you're looking at Banjo's hand right now, on the... Uh, yeah. So this is what Banjo's left hand looks like right now. You want to line up the crack right here with his hand. So you can kind of see that. It's between his forefinger and thumb right here. Up, hold Z, and uh, turn around completely to face like this and go into Tail and Trot. So this is going to be our first Clockwork Warp. This is pretty advanced if you're new to Tui. We're going to take a shot. We see that it goes through that crack. There is definitely a crack in that wall. So now that we shoot two testers, because it is possible for the first tester to be a misfire. So we're going to test two. If two testes goes through, then you're good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to poop a grenade, and if it bounces off to the left right away, we're going to switch to clockwork eggs, get in a talon trot, and shoot as soon as we can, because we're already lined up. So we're going to poop a grenade, get in a talon trot, it bounced off to the left, switch to clockworks, and we're in. It's very, very time sensitive how you, how fast you do that. So if you need anything, rewatch how I did that. Watch the input display. You're going to want to tap two times to get it. To, you're going to want to have muscle memory on how many times to tap. So moving on, if you need any help with that, there's plenty of other guides. There's plenty of things to look for, but that is how you do snakehead skip. So next we're going to be going up here. We're going to be activating this. This is another pretty tough trick but I'm going to go over it with you. You know what? 
We're gonna we're gonna do the safe way. We're gonna do the baby way for the guide here, because this is meant for newer players. So you know what? No, we can do it. You got I'm 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 confident you guys can do it. Because I'll just tell you the other way. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna jump, peck, and get to the other side of this uh unga bunga. <clears throat> this crumb. That's a topical joke right now. It's not gonna be relevant that much longer. So what you can do, as soon as you grab this in uh and as Banjo and Kazooie, you will hold it above your head and you can only walk very, very slowly. So whatever you do, it's important to remain in Talon Trot. Because if you'd never if you're always in Talon Trot jumping, you can't you will remain in Talon Trot, but if you slow down in Talon Trot and just try to walk, you will go back to holding it above your head. So one thing you can do is grab it in Talon Trot. <clears throat> If you grab it in Talon Trot, you can jump all the way back around, and that's a baby strat, and you're probably not going to mess it up. The other way <clears throat> is going to be the grab the grab the relic. Make sure to keep jumping. Do not land for too long. So jump here, grab it, jump, and we're going to land here. If you land on here, you do not uh, go into the relic animation. It's a very tight jump. If you fall on the sticks, the caveman will wake up. If you fall in the fire, you will leave uh, you, and you try to land, you will go back into the standing walking animation. So it's very, very, very important that you land this and do not land in the fire or anything else. So next you're going to get back into Talon Trot and jump and keep jumping all the way to the end. Now that we're already through, uh, you're no longer going to hold the relic above your head. You're going to want to turn the camera so you're not facing all of the fire. Again, shoutouts to Mumbo Token. And jump straight down into the guy. <clears throat> Blotazan is his name. Sorry. Mash B to get through the Ungabunga text. The Crom player's text. The K Roll player's text. Smash is relevant right now. Unga bunga. AF. Alright. Ash B. We're gonna see this cutscene for this door open that we already opened and went through, but don't worry about it. We're gonna get in town chart right away. And grab this jiggy. And exit. I call that split danger zone for a reason. And it's because there's a lot of dangerous things. So now we're going to turn the camera. Have it face this wall until about here. And I'll turn it back towards. Shoot a grenade. And if you did the camera movement successfully, you will end up with one extra grenade. And that's a one extra clockwork. And that's useful. Next, you're going to take a right, hug this wall, go around this side of this moggy and jump into the water. Get into C up. Get rid of the reticle. And you're going to pop up out of the water right here, as fast as you can. Turn around. And now you're going to make this clockwork shot. We're going to be getting that jiggy from right here. So what I like to aim for is I like to put the bottom of my reticle. If you can see this green ring around this light, I like to have my reticle on the completely the other side there. Or like right there and slightly above the green ring so just up a little bit there and we make the shot and we're right up there so if you can kind of get in a position and it's gonna be kind of a comfort thing where you where you kind of can feel it out uh, if you are feeling like you can't make this shot it's you can find a really consistent place over here to do it and it might be a little bit easier but it's going to be a lot faster if you can make that shot from the water. So anyway, get back in the water and swim back through. Alright, from here, we're going to backflip up. Up the side. Up again. Up here. Jump across. And this jump you're going to want to roll and just trust that you'll grab. Now when you're going uh, across in grip grab, you can let go here and flutter across. If you happen to re-grab the ledge, you will not be able to flap again. So make sure you just land where you need to land. 
because you cannot flap twice, and grip grab doesn't count as landing. So this next trick, when I get down to the bottom, I'm going to uh, I'm going to put the jiggy at the bottom of the screen just so it's not visible, and at the middle. So we're gonna get into these boots, take a full jump over here, land somewhere around this dark spot, line up the jiggy in the middle of the screen, and put it at the bottom. Shoot a clockwork. It'll land right on the jiggy every time. Next you want to want to get out of the mud before the boots expire. Next is codes. So the code I recommend is this order. Star. Sun. Star. Moon. Moon. If that code doesn't work, you go directly into star. Sun. Star. Star. And if that code doesn't work, this is perfect, actually. We go into sun, moon, star, moon, sun. And now it opens up. Now if you get too close to Dilberta in here, she will trigger text. So you want to go in here just a little bit, jump, flutter, and build drill on the rock. Get into Talon Trot. And exit Mayhem Temple. Nice. Now you're going to want to go around and talk to the or the uh, Bullion Bill. They're getting a lot of lore tonight. Talk to Bullion Bill there. So he pushes you a little bit towards the Jiggy. Grab the Jiggy and exit. Next we're going to flap off, flap down and to the left onto this little section. Jump over here. And shoot a grenade, or shoot a clockwork here, and you're gonna ride this line down and right into that crack. So that went really fast, I wasn't expecting it to go that fast, but there, if you land on top of that rock pile, you will be able to find the crack on the right side. If you slow down the bot or something, you'll be able to see it. And you're just gonna open up Canary Mary's cage. Kind of a long cutscene. Uh, now we're going to get in Talon Trot and we're not going to jump anymore at this point. We're going to walk all the way down because it is downhill. So once we start walking, we're just going to keep downhill walk. We're going to hug the wall. We're going to break off from the trail right here and go directly into this door. So what you're going to see now is I'm going to walk di directly in a very certain line here right towards the edge of that plank so what i'm kind of looking at all right i'm gonna i'm gonna kill that this thing just so i can show off what you're supposed to be doing pay no mind to this all right <clears throat> so when i come through the door what i'm looking for right here is i'm walking i'm walking this plank of wood right here on that i'm walking directly towards that i'm gonna go in here fall in and wait two two you heard banjo go pff, pff. that's all you want are right, you gonna want to go up here and if you can imagine an imaginary line between that jinjo and the top edge of that pipe if you shoot right there at this 90 degree angle where the Jinjo and that pipe would intersect. Shoot. Right on the Jinjo. S down and swim. And we're going to grab this treble clef. And resurface. And back on our way across. <clears throat> we're going to go straight for this gem pile. You don't need the warp. Collect all four notes on top of the jump pile. And I like to jump about halfway down to the bottom of that big one. And this clockwork shot is pretty straightforward. Uh, and by that I mean it's like straight across. So 
aim kind of, you can aim right where that water is coming out, basically, just above it, right there, and you'll always get it. Next, you're going to walk out here. You're going to go into the toxic room, and we're going to grab this Jinjo. Right back out. We're going to hug this wall the whole time. Start jumping uphill. We can continue jumping downhill if you're careful. I like to hug this wall the whole way up. And Bill drill this rock. And we're going to enter the second, um, the second area of the ordnance storage. Or the second area of FPS. So we're going to go over here get this jam jars. He's going to teach us how to uh, beat bayonet, which is important for this. If you're low on grenades, you can always get or eggs. I th that's a good spot to get a backup, in my opinion, or a clockwork or anything you might need. Uh, but we're gonna strafe over here. And for ordnance storage, I want you guys to just watch my movement. Uh, make sure you watch the input display, see what's going on, because uh, it's kind of hard to explain, and you'll learn more from watching. But it is important to follow the route. So I'm gonna enter, and here we go. I like to have grenades selected right here. Notice where I take damage, because it is going to be important to manage your health throughout this. We're going to take one damage off of this, yeehaw. We're going to take a second damage off of this wall and have it recoil so we can see the dynamite and rehug this wall. We're going to take another damage off of this yaw. And if things go right here, we're going to hit this, take a damage off the Iha, get him, and get that's a 36, so very close to a 37. That was a pretty good ordnance storage. And now since we only have one health, we can buffer a Z input by just holding it right now, and we'll take our final damage from the wall. Next we just uh, strafe out of here. Now the camera is a bit screwy with this, so it's it's kind of hard to strafe right now. We're gonna get that jiggy, and we're out. All right. So next is the Canary Mary race. We're gonna go here. Now I'm gonna try to flex with how fast I can meter. So the faster you beat her, doesn't matter because she is going to go a set speed. So you actually kind of wait, want to wait for her to be just at the end to reduce lag. And you kind of want to just have that little cutscene happen. So, what happens next is we're going to get the um, the Jiggy from Canary Mary. And we're going to go up the blue gem pile. 
So get this Jiggy. Go up the blue jump pile. Flutter and Bill Drill. Get the yellow Jinjo. That'll be another Jiggy. And go to this warp pad and we're gonna warp to Mumbo's skull. Outside Mumbo's skull. Alright, go up here, jump once, and all the way down. Bill Drill. Get this Jinjo. And the next is kind of a more lenient clockwork shot, but I'll show you guys kind of where I stand to get it set up. You're going to want to stand on the, this fuse a little bit to the right of it. So if you're standing about here, you're in a really good spot for it. I'll even test it with a grenade. You usually don't need to test this because it's a pretty big gap, but not as big as it looks. I'm going to shoot a grenade, shoot a guy through, and get our ginger. So you want to be close. Drill. And we're actually going to do Power Hut first. As Solo Kazooie. So we switch to Solo K. And leave. Jump. Wing Whack. Flutter. And jump across and die. <laughs> Recombine. So for this little backflip, I like to hold R. As it's turning around, press C down once so I'm in a good spot. Backflip towards and you'll grab the ladder every time <coughs> and we can die now and we're going to just leave or back to Entry and exit. And next we're going to open up uh, TDL. TDL and GI actually, sorry. That's a pretty good puzzle. We're going to go right to GI. GI puzzle next.
Wow. Wow. I feel like I already tried that one. Alright. Alright. So that we have GI open, we're going to reset on the thing. And so I'm actually going to do this over the course of a couple days so I can like be more fresh about it. So I'm going to pause this for now. I'll probably finish it early tomorrow, but I'm going to stop for right now. But we're going to reset as soon as this cutscene happens. All right, so now where we're at here, since we're going from another hard reset, uh, we're going to have to mash start, and we'll be able to clear as soon as uh, the T touches the bottom of the bridge. But I just mash for him. And mash A. So now we're kind of past the mid game, or past like the early game, and we're entering more mid game stuff. Um, so first thing we're going to do is utilize our clockworks before we do a fill up. I'm going to jump to about this spot and shoot about here to collect that treble clef. And now we're going to go to Wasteland. So I like to turn the camera with left and face this way. We're going to take a couple of jumps over here, and it's very important to refill on Clockworks because we're going to need a lot of them coming up here. And make our way over here. If you're short on red feathers or anything, or you can always take another little fill up light right there. Alright, so now that we've entered TDL, we're going to go down this slope here. And we're going to go around. I'm going to jump to about this spot, and you'll be able to clear up to this. So keep in mind, if you start here, you can make it. So you're going to want to come about here, jump up. So just here, up. And we're going to get up to GM Jars. So this is kind of a thing, I see a lot of people not utilizing this, and it, I'm like, why? So, what you're going to do is stand somewhere about here. So if you're coming up, you can stand somewhere about like right here. Maybe even a little bit further. And you go into C up. And you're just going to shoot this. So shoot the switch. Turn your camera over to look at the gate. And we're going to switch to Clockworks as fast as we can. And as soon as you collect the Jinjo, Mash B, and you'll talk to Jam Jars and skip the Jinjo cutscene. Alright, next we're gonna go down collecting these notes as we go. Take a couple of jumps up here, and this is kind of a deceptively hard shot. I, I don't like shooting kind of like straight across. So you're going to have to get a feel for this depending on where you stand and where you shoot. But uh, I stand somewhere about like right here and shoot aim a little bit lower. And you'll land somewhere here and you're going to kill him. Now I start turning the camera so we can get back out of here. Fall down, get this note as we go. Jump up this slope, and jump all the way, hit the Kazooie pad, and slide onto here. So the first shot you're going to do is this hole right above the uh, rock nut. Shoot it right in there. Turn your camera a little bit, and explode behind him. Now you're going to go into C up, and we're going to shoot this to get to the blue Jinjo. Now, as soon as I get this blue Jinjo and explode, I'm going to start turning the camera so that I'm facing a different direction. So I'm going to turn the camera with that, and I'm going to switch to Kazooie. Now, the reason we're turning the camera is because this next portion is very time-sensitive and camera-sensitive because we're going to be trying to get a couple extra clockworks. 
So uh, turn and jump. Keeping the clockworks out of the frame for as long as you can. And now when we get about over here, you should have kept the clockworks out of the frame long enough to be able to go and get those. Now if you're sitting there and looking at them the whole time, they will not be clockworks and you're going to have to wait and get them because it's very vital that you get those too. Because you're going to need them, especially when you're first starting out. Now for this part, uh, this is a pretty simple shot. And to get in position, I just slide off of here, and you can kind of see where I like to stand. Uh, this is different for everybody, but there's two lines that kind of make a like a lightning bolt. So there's this and this one, and I like to stand right kind of here. And it's pretty easy to slide into position. Now, this shot right here, you can kind of see how if you lined up like on this right side of this gate, or on the little bit of this black line that you're kind of on the edge. So you should be somewhere about like right here and shoot. And you're gonna bank off and end up right inside the cage. Get the black Jinjo. And explode. Pretty easy. Hold left so the camera's already turning. And we're gonna get up here and use the springy shoes. Up. And jump. So I like to jump over here into this spot. If he's in your way, kill him because if you're gonna get hit, you're trying to retain health with only two health Kazooie. And you're gonna shoot right into that hole. Turn your camera. And detonate on him, trying to keep the camera, the waterfall out of the frame. Once you're through. Get up on this land. And we're going to take a right into this cave, and we're going to get the uh, springy shoes out of this cave. So grab these. And now be careful here, because you can fall off, and if you fall off, you're going to be eaten a lot of time. But you're just going to go up here, make this zigzag. Now once you jump up to the highest extent here, you're going to want to mash A towards the towards the platform, and then B to wing whack. So, jump, mash A, wing whack, you want both grenades, stand on the, stand on the uh, shock spring pad, and shoot a clockwork, jump down, and land on this bridge. Now that's going to take a little bit of practice, but if you watch my input display, hopefully that should help a little bit. As soon as you respawn back, jump and flap it up again. You might collect some eggs every now and then. And you're going to want to get into position somewhere around here and shoot a clockwork off of this edge and hit that wall. You're going to have to curve around into here and get this rock nut. Which will be the last one and should spawn a jiggy. Make sure to collect that warp pad and cross the bridge. Next thing we're going to do is uh, the bonfire cavern jumps. So this is pretty straightforward, but it can be kind of easy to mess up. Uh, and I know plenty of really good runners that have lost runs, or at least lost a lot of time to messing this up. So you're going to want to jump, flap, wing whack second. If that bird's in your way, kill it. It's not a big deal. And now because we're doing no DCW, it's pretty important that you retain your health, so we're going to have to jump around that bonfire as well. And it's the same thing. Jump off, and wing whack back. Now if you did this quickly, or in any sort of fashion, you should be having that uh, clockwork egg spawn. And we're going to go back out to the uh, stomping planes. Okay. So... This is going to be uh, kind of an interesting little, uh, this is an interesting little uh, tidbit because it, it happens really quickly. So I want you guys to watch my inputs. So when I warp, I'm going to hold up, up and uh, left on the C-stick. Oh. Okay. It's up and right on the C-stick. Disregard that. Up and right on the C-stick, 
And after you take a couple steps off of the warp pad, you're going to press Z and hold Z until you hit the ground. So we don't take any damage. Jump across, grab the notes as you go. And now we're doing the roar cage. So some, a lot of videos and a lot of guides you'll see online will tell you a little bit faster method where you go up into this corner. But a method that really works for me because it's really obvious to look at is stand on this black dot. You want to stand more off to the right of it and look. Now as you can see, the center of the reticle here going straight up, there's this whole crack that you can like clear as daylight see if you're going to make it or not. So I'm going to put the clockwork egg right there. Easy peasy. Now, the reason we conserved health was so that we are, are able to take damage out of this. So I'm going to shoot another one in there just to show you guys. So we have it in here, we've collected the Jiggy, you want to jump back towards the front and hit Kazooie to skip the uh, Jiggy animation. And we're going to run back through here and get that Jiggy. Then you're going to get into this cave right here. Down into Anungabunga's cave. And learn Hatch. After you've learned Hatch, you're going to switch, switch to Grenade Eggs. And collect necessary feathers. And die. Next step, recombine his banjo. And we're going to go all the way up the slope. Off to the right. And into the waterfall cavern. Submerge and get rid of the reticle. Hold A and B to swim faster with Royston. And right about here, you're going to want to press Z to get Talon Torpedo. And we're going to get all four notes in all four corners of this room. After you're done, let go and surface. Jump up and grab this ledge. Mash A, get into Talon Trot. And split up. Now as Solo Banjo, go across the other side, we're going to utilize uh, the uh, trick of the uh, uh, backpack double jump. So we're going to get Taxi Pack, and we're going to turn right around. And we don't need to use that ledge on the other side, but instead if we position ourselves about here, jump, we're able to grab that ledge. It is a little bit tricky and your positioning is going to be a little bit tight. But it's going to save a lot of time compared to going over there and uh, re-grabbing the ledge. So after that, we're going to get back in the water, submerge, get rid of the reticle with down C, and we're going to swim directly down the waterfall. As soon as we land, we're going to submerge. And use Talon Torpedo again. Get into C up turn directly to the right and hit this Kazooie switch and we're going to get the brown Jinjo. Make sure to cancel it, it make sure to cancel Talon Torpedo as soon as you hit the switch and as soon as you get the Jinjo. Surface and we're going to get some notes in this order. Get that note, that note, and this note. Next, we're going to go up to the, um, the warp. Make sure you turn around as you use the warp so you're facing the wall and warp to Stomping Plains. Stomping Plains is a section that's going to be all about taking straight lines, like I talked about before. And you're going to want to time your jump so you, it gives you the most time in between feet, or footprints, to get to the other side. 
So again, this is a part of the video you might want to rewind and watch to get the full effect. Uh, but uh, yeah, try to watch exactly what I'm doing in this section to avoid getting hit by the stomp on it on foot. So we're going to sit here. As the foot is raising, I jump. I go from the toe of that one to the toe of this one. Make sure you switch to regular eggs and we're going to do another... Be uh, our f it might be our first egg barge. So to perform it, if I haven't talked about this yet, we're going to shoot, a shoot an egg with uh, Z and C like that. But as soon as we've shot it, we're going to uh, mash B to uh, do a beak bust. And that's going to extend our hitbox just enough so you get that ch chinjo. You get to practice it again right here with that jiggy. Remain in Talon Trot and go up the stairs. Take the warp, and we're going to warp to the top of the mountain. Go up the mountain and take a left. If you're short on clockworks, there you can get an extra one right there. Once up here, switch back to grenades. And to get in good position, I'm going to jump to the left side. So what I'm going to do here is try to get... This is kind of an advanced strategy, but I'm going to try to get some extra clockworks during the fight. So I'm going to wait here and get this clockwork. I'm going to get to about this uh, spot right here, and we're going to try a two-cycle Terry, which involves shooting in front and behind. So the first shot I did shot in front of him and behind him, and they both hit around the same time, and it allowed me to get an extra shot in there to get him to 14. So now we're going to kill these. As they're being killed, I collect that other clockwork, and I'm going to break the, the uh, seal on that. I'm going to make my way over here and get one more clockwork. And I'm going to try to position myself in an area about over here uh, with the route we're taking. And we got the two cycle. So if you were to just shoot Terry a bunch, uh, you would always three cycle. So it's very important to do like I did there and shoot in front and the middle. Front and middle, front and middle. So what that does is it allows you to hit him twice and get extra damage. Otherwise, the fight is going to take a long time. Uh, missing a two cycle, I believe, is a 40 second time loss, so it, it's pretty significant. Especially when you get your time down a little bit further. So with the hardest route being the uh, Champa, Champa skip route, uh, we actually try to get down to one health here so we can death warp. But with this route, it's kind of an intermediate route that a lot of people with top time views, uh, we don't need to worry about that because we are going to go to Champa next. So to start this, when we regain control of this Banjo and Kazooie, we're going to go into the hole, go into Talon Trot as we're going in, and just jump out. Don't need to use the Shock Spring Pad. Now, as we get that jiggy, we turn directly around. And you can kind of see where you need to be because it's going to be on the on this side of Terry. And we're just going to go up here, backflip up. A little bit more this way. Backflip up. Oh, come on. A little bit up here. Backflip up. And jump straight down into the hole. So it's going to be right by Terry, just on his right side there. Or it would be his left side. Get a talon trot and jump on this. Switch. And now we're going to fall down into the little spire down there. So I like to zoom my camera out so I can see exactly where I'm going. But uh, your camera isn't going to zoom out unless you're past this wall. So if you, if you want to be safe, go out here a little bit past these and zoom your camera out. And then we're just going to jump. Somewhere here we can flap to kind of position ourselves, but you want to fall directly on top of that 
little mountain there. If you don't, uh, it's, you can get back up there. It's just going to be a little bit more time loss. You can go over and get to the flight pad and land on there, but it's it's kind of rough if you miss. So next, uh, the Chomposaurus minigame is pretty straightforward. You just need 70. I believe it's 70, but it's not too hard to hit. Uh, make sure you skip the rules. So one thing that we want to keep in mind, once we get enough health here, is I didn't move for a very good reason. And that's because I'm going to try to set myself up exactly where the Jiggy spawns at the end of this minigame. And with a little bit of good luck... So this is the bump we're looking for, right here. So we're going to stand right here on top of this little bump. Hopefully we don't get pushed by any of the ulcers. We're gonna skip text, and we're gonna mash start as fast as you can. We didn't get it. But that's okay. And we just wanna save and quit. So you're able to get the you're able to pull up the menu, but it's I it's I believe it's frame perfect. Uh, so it's kinda rough. But um Yeah, after that. That's it for TDL. Mash start. And mesh A to get back into the game. Talon trap. And now we're going to be warping to TDL. Or not TDL, to uh, Clifftop. Once we're on Clifftop, we're going to do a little bit of a tricky shot here. But I'm going to show you guys my setup for it and how it works for me. And again, like most tricks in this game, uh, you have to find what works for you. So I like to get about in this spot right here. Go on a tail and trot and flip around. Now see that's a little bit close. So you want to be on this green line right here that I'm on. I like to be about halfway up it and facing towards these tracks. If I pull directly up about there, gives me the Jinjo. So you want to check and see where my reticle was there, and we'll enter uh, JRL. First thing we're going to do in JRL is go to the split up pads and switch to Solo Kazooie. So earlier in the run, we uh, destroyed this little bit of um, this little patch here in the ground. We're going to shock spring up to get three doubloons. And enter Mumbo's skull. Switch to make sure we're on grenades. And go in a counterclockwise circle. So that when you collect the last coin, you're closest to the wall. And take damage as you leave. Next, we're going to come out of this cove here and watch for the pirate boy. Because he can sneak up and hit you. And you're going to want to jump over here, get on the egg, and hatch it. With our new jam jars move. Mesh B and R to skip his text and wing whack the baby. Hold A and B. <clears throat> so I'm gonna turn the music down a little bit, sorry, if it's been too loud. <clears throat> uh grab the jiggy, and as you go to grab the jiggy, uh Run into it, slide, and press C up, and you're going to die just like that. Next step, recombine. And we're going to enter Panos. Jump over to Pano, mash B to get out of Talon Trot, mash through his text, and A 
I. This is going to be another beginner kind of friendly thing, is you're going to get three clockworks in this room, just in case you are low. Now, if your clockwork count is good, and you haven't missed any, you do not need these. But if you have missed a few clockwork shots, it doesn't hurt to get a few backups. Jump to get the jiggy, and some notes, and you're out of there. Also, if you're not super confident with your egg collection ability for the crispy bacon minigame, uh, it helps to get those ones as well. But I'm going to show you guys a pretty easy way to get a few eggs. So when you leave, you should be swimming towards the um, towards the uh, uh, crispy bacon minigame, and we're going to enter that. As soon as you're in here, see up and go directly towards crispy bacon and skip through his text as fast as you can. Now as soon as this happens, you're going to submerge, see up, get rid of the uh, reticle, grab this clockwork, and we're going to beeline right for this clockwork. And next we're going to make sure we're in position to get that clockwork when it spawns again. And now we're going to shoot some fish. Uh, a tricky thing about this minigame is that there's always fish that can spawn on the other side of crispy bacon that you might not be able to see. So the reason that we're positioned in this way is that when the clockworks respawn on their timer, uh, we'll collect them. So we just keep shooting fish until the timer gets a little bit lower and we can start swimming towards the middle right by his cage. Make sure that there's no fish that are going to get him or anything. Now you're going to swim towards the jiggy and exit the uh, Exit the, uh, caverns. Make sure that you are looking towards the jiggy before you start swimming. And leave. Now because we submerged so early, we are a little short on air, so it's going to be pretty tight timing for us to swim over to uh, the Seaweed Sanctum. But uh, you will you will have enough time, don't worry. We still have that full bubble and we can surface as soon as we get there. If you're really short on air and you're really scared for some reason, that's fine. Taking damage is not the worst thing in the world here. In fact, it doesn't... It, it's... We're going to be uh, death warping at the end of this sequence anyway. So you're going to want to get on this shock spring pad. Flutter at the top of your jump. And if you flutter at the top of your jump, you don't even have to grab this ledge. But if you don't grab the ledge which I'll try to show up not grabbing the ledge. If you aren't going to grab the ledge, you can just get up that way as well. We're going to want to jump. Make sure you clear him because he can have a hitbox. It's random. This one, you are going to have to beak bust. So jump up, flutter, and about here. Beak bust on top. Beak bust on top to get this Jinjo. Cut this corner, and down we go. Now because we've stocked up pretty well on grenades, we only need one, but you can get two nests. And we're going to swim down, get out our grenades, and start firing away at the teeth. The teeth are pretty touchy, but try to get into about the position I was there and you'll have a pretty good shot at them, especially early. Hopefully those guys aren't in your way, but we're going to head towards this right pipe and get this red Jinjo at the bottom. Jump back up the pipe. 
and enter the main belly area. Where we see Mary Maggie. Skip her text and watch this excruciatingly long cutscene before we're going to go in Death Warp. And this is where it, it, it helps a lot if you can take damage other places, uh, especially if you're low on grenades. You're going to go to about where those feathers are. And because of the bounty floor, it's going to be really easy to uh, spam, sh spam shots of grenades. Next, we're going to go over to Jally's and claim our Jiggy. During this cutscene, you're going to want to hold down Z, otherwise you will exit Talentrot. So go up, talk to Jally, mash Z. He's not going to talk to you any further, but just hold down Z this whole time. Jump up, grab that, and leave. Now, this tutorial, I'm not going to be going over... Actually, I will be going over it. We are going to skip the Toxic Waste because I think, uh, especially for this intermediate level tutorial, um, this, is, this is something I can kind of talk to you about. If you are, want a more difficult shot, um, you can save this for later. Now, it saves a lot more time in no DCW because in 100%, you have to go over here anyway to collect that's honeycomb piece but we don't need that in no dcw so if you would like a little bit easier gi go over here and if you're taking a more beginner route uh you can I, i'll show both actually this is kind of something that is up to the player and i don't think either one is terribly hard but it it can be a little bit more rough to skip this part so after you leave jollies i like to shoot a grenade there Jump across, jump on up, and uh, enter the hole here. Now see what going into here is going to do is make our clockwork count in GI a lot easier. And it uh, is going to save ourselves a little bit of a, a headache later on in the run. I will note that doing this now is far easier than trying to set up and get the shot very quickly but it is considerably faster to uh put this put that off till later and i will go over that shot uh when i get to gi so after you exit here you're gonna want to turn the camera so that you're facing away from the lagoon and you're going to want to jump right into the drink You can switch to ice eggs if you'd like now, which I recommend, and we're going to go right down to this Kazooie door, or Talon Torpedo. I like to go about right here where the shadow is, and about right here we're going to turn on and get this note nest. As soon as we're done, we're able to swim in. Oh. And now you activate the uh, fuel. Imagine a spaceship that ran on water. And exit the UFO. So we're very, very, very nearly done with mid-game, and we're just about into the end game where I think this category truly shines in its fast-paced funness, and it makes it makes some levels that might carry on in in hundred uh, percent really fast-paced and kind of fun. So you're gonna up, see up, and collect this jiggy. Very easy to forget this. Don't use a clockwork to shoot him. But make sure you grab that note. And then switch back to clockworks. You can use any type of egg to shoot him. Do not use a clockwork. 
goes directly up here. See up. And this shot is going to be vastly different depending on where you're at and where you surface. But if you surface about here, you want to take a shot about here, right at that little triangle. And you'll land directly on the jiggy. Don't bother blowing up, just save and quit. And with that, we are done with Jolly Roger Lagoon. Next, so we're going to get enter the file right away again. And we're going to warp to Wasteland. Go directly up the slope. If you are too terribly low on clockworks, now would be a good time to refill. Back there at Jam Jars, but we are not, so we're just gonna truck right on ahead here. Make sure to grab this silo. It is important because we will be coming back to Quagmire to finish the run. And we're gonna enter Grunty Industries. Now it's kind of at this point that I'm going to start slowing a little bit more down to um, kind of go over some of these tricks. So this is one of many ways to do this uh, section, but it is what works for me. And I recommend anyone else look at other videos and just practice the heck out of this section just so you are comfortable with it. So when you come here, I like to let this guy come over here, and if he's further away, I let him hit me. I then freeze him, stand on the edge of this pile, shoot one ice egg, shoot my clockwork up there, turn around, and as soon as I hear him screech, I wait a second and jump in. And that is how I do break in. Now, I probably went pretty fast there, and you can go back and rewind, but that's how I do break in. There's a lot faster methods, there's other ways, but that is very consistent for me doing it that way. And I recommend it if someone is struggling with other ways. Next, you're going to want to jump down here. I flutter once and fall straight down onto jam jars. Next, I'm going to hold C right, jump, and switch to Kazooie as fast as you can. As soon as I switch to Kazooie, I switch to Ice Eggs as I'm going. Fly and maintain height so you can take damage as you fall into the air con door. Now this, uh, this is something that can lose a lot of time or gain a lot of time depending on how quickly you do it. So uh, if you can kind of see how Kazooie's left foot is lined up with the, um, let's see, with the, um, uh, the grate, that is what I'm looking for. So this should be a good setup. So I'm going to turn and in fact it is. So uh, where the reticle is now, if you look right down the middle, how it's kind of, there's a gray line, but it's on the right side of that gray line. That is exactly where you want to be shooting. And it's right about here, about right in the middle of this, that we're going to shoot a clockwork. And I'm going to hold left a after I shoot the clockwork to make sure that it moves. As soon as you collect it, you can switch eggs to grenades and we're going to shoot and die. Alright, so we're gonna stay a solo Kazooie. Jump down and get these springy shoes. Jump up. And we're gonna jump up here. Use this shock spring pad as it's a little bit closer. Hold down as you're coming out. 
and we're going to line ourselves up about here by this line. And you're going to want to position your reticle in the middle and just underneath the light. Shoot a clockwork and hold right or left and you'll collect the tin tub jiggy. So it's this line and that spot on the light. Now that's pretty lenient and you don't need to be exact, but uh, if you miss it will activate the tin tubs and you'll have a pretty bad time. Next is Kazooie. We're going to beeline directly for this. I like to shoot the grenade on the left side and enter the right side so I don't take damage. Shoot another grenade here. Next, I walk right off, drop down, grab that note, flap to grab that note, grab. make sure you're on the top of this, switch to clockworks, get that Jinjo. And we should have 545 notes, which is exactly how many we're going to need to get this jam jars. And this is the last move we're going to need. So after we learn leg spring, you're going to switch to grenades and death warp. Make sure you don't recombine, and the first thing you're going to do out of the death warp is activate this switch, switch to Banjo. And sit on this switch. So now as Solo Banjo, we're going to walk directly outside and we're going to go get a battery to power one of the doors. So with Banjo, uh, it's more important than ever to make sure you're going in a straight line because he's already slow to begin with. As Banjo hug this corner and exit. We're going to be heading straight for this ladder on this side. Pack whack up. Take one damage from the battery. Then hit it. Taxi pack. Grab it. And we're going to death warp off of the side of this platform. So from here we're going to jump down. And you, you need to land in the purple goo to get the proper fall distance. So as soon as we have that, we're going to head towards the compactor, which I hold down and right on the stick, and head directly for the compactor. As soon as we enter the compactor, I press A and B to get a little bit more distance, and you can get a second jump out of that if you're quick enough, but it's not a whole lot of distance. Now, as I do the compactor, I like to hug the left side a little bit more, or at least start walking towards there. And I jump about on the ground. I pack whack and make the, the jump one more time. And I get grenade eggs right here. So last time, to just kind of explain uh, uh, this jump... What I'm looking for with this jump is to jump at the latest frame as possible, jump, pack whack, and is about five-sixths of the way to the ground. A pack whack and jump again. So here we're going to purposely take one damage, jump onto the conveyor, get the jiggy, and ride the conveyor to take damage to death warp. We're going to come off of here, and right on the uh, spot where we're able to switch from Banjo to Kazooie, we're going to let go of the battery and press A to switch to Kazooie as soon as we regain control. As soon as we have Kazooie, this is kind of a difficult section. So we're going to take the Claw Clamber boots and hug the corner again and leave. Hold C left on the camera to get turned around and be facing it that way. So that we're at the top and I like to jump off. We don't need this treble clef, so don't worry about it. 
So this is kind of a hard jump and is going to take some practice and I recommend you do it a little bit before doing a run. But all it is, is we're going to run off and as we're sliding, as you can see if you're running, you do this slide and it maintains some momentum as you exit the ledge. So without going too low, we want to be pretty far and use our new leg spring. So go, and that's going to be too low. So I'm going to go back. So I run off, use some of that height, and hug the wall. And the reason I hug the wall is so I can push straight into it, and if I hit with the wing whack, I'm, I hit this wall. Instead of, if you come from the other side, you, are, you will egg, enter that loading zone, and that'll take a really long time. So I like to aim for this corner right here with the wing whack. So to kind of show that again, I like to jump off and go right for that corner so that I never go into that loading zone. From here, we're going to go up. I like to take a few flaps and beak bomb right there. We shoot that. Great. And then shoot a clockwork in all at once. Isn't that fun? So much stuff. So many things. <laughs> Which that's going to take some practice on your own too. To find out a setup that you like. But as soon as you regain control of Kazooie, you're going to turn around and uh, beak bomb the wall. So that we land off of that. Now it's important that you beak bomb the wall instead of the ground because the ground will put you into a... Uh, like a skid and you don't want that you want the recoil from the wall to put you on the ground and it's important that you activate that warp so we're going to jump and wing whack to this jiggy i wanted to jump to the other side of the room and set up this clockwork shot now it's a pretty wide door but if you kind of look i i like to set up uh the kazooie's like tuft of hair with like the this little crack and as long as you're in here, you want to aim about, like, just under that black dot on the left side. And shoot an egg. A little bit higher. So, as soon as you got it, you want to aim above that Jinjo, like on that, right there. And you can switch to grenades and die or use the clockwork from before to kill yourself. But it's just important that you death warp there. Next, recombine his banjo. And next we're going to be doing uh, another series of like pretty difficult tricks here. In some ways. So as soon as we're down here, you're going to want to flutter in a more majestic way. But um, as soon as you're here, you're going to want to do another egg barge to get this Jinjo. And we're going to do our first quick dive of the run. So you're going to activate, you're going to activate um, uh, your golden feathers. And just before you enter the water, you're going to let go and mash B. So that was really early. So that's what happens if you let go way early. And mash Z as soon as you take... As soon as you're in the water, mash Z to get out. And wait a little bit and swim about to this middle of the grate right here. As soon as you're here, stop. Do not touch anything. See up. Look at the jiggy and swim towards it with A and B. It's very important you come to a full standstill. Otherwise the trick will not work. Unless it does, because it does sometimes. So at this point, because we already pressed that switch, all we need to do is uh, uh, egg barge that uh, little section. But if we didn't and you want a more advanced route, we're going to have to do a pretty difficult clockwork shot. Now this clockwork shot consists of how I set it up. I'm not going to do the shot because I need the clockwork that I have right now. But I'm going to get into this corner and start mashing A and lightly tap on the control stick to the first 
to the first uh, to the or on the A button to the first spot where you're able to come off of the ledge there. Then we're gonna do a full egg or a full beak barge and look up about here. Now this works almost all the time, but sometimes it is kind of in a wonky spot. And if I were to shoot a clockwork, it would go and land on top of the pipe and you would be able to uh, get the uh, the button that way. So that now b both routes kind of reconverge here. Like I said, if you got the if you push the button in JRL, you don't need to worry about that shot, but if you want to go for a little bit faster time, I recommend that shot. Okay. So next when we kind of when we leave this, we want to make sure we're in tail and trot and as soon as we enter the door, we're going to hold down and right and that's going to put us back on so we're able to do a, a jump all the way to this side otherwise you're going to have to do, uh, go around to that side and uh, do a backflip to get across next we're going to go up to the roof <clears throat> coming up is it going to be another clockwork warp jump down here and we're gonna get this black Jinjo go about here talon trot jump around the building mash a ignore floor three climb the ladder and enter this loading zone now what I'm gonna be looking for as soon as I come in here I'll show you guys what I look for to make this setup faster so you can see this box right here, and I'm going to be heading directly for the corner of that box, right where the reticle is. That is where I'm aiming with worth my run. So I kind of line up Banjo's nose, and I'm running right for that. It's about here. I'm going to turn and look at that gap. Look at that gap. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. So what you're going to do from here is because we're in this spot, we're going to poop one grenade, get back into tail and trot, and shoot a clockwork through the hole. And that is that is quality control early. Switch back to grenades. Stand about here. You don't want to be too close to the corner. And start shooting blue barrels. You don't want to be any further that way because there's a possibility that the Jiggy would spawn on top of you. And a blue barrel comes every seven barrels. If you happen to hit a green barrel, reset immediately. Do not wait. Reset. If you do not reset immediately... So if you were to grab that Jiggy without, during that cutscene, the game does soft lock. It will freeze. It's not even a soft lock. It crashes. The game will crash if you grab that Jiggy while the cutscene is playing. Do not think you're going to save time by standing over by this Jiggy when it spawns. You will lose time. You will lose the run. Do not do it. Now, we're going to roll and backflip on top of that spring pad and jump over here. Do not bother with Talon Trot up to that point. Jump on these boxes and exit. Next is the cable room. <laughs> Pretty easy. Now because my grenade count is so good, I'm going to grab this grenade right here. And that will definitely be enough grenades to tide me over. Don't fall down there. But instead continue up. And I'll show you guys where to get backup grenades if you are low. Because there's a good chance you could be low. So since I have enough grenades, I would normally just beeline right for the clinkers game. Which is straight across the room. But if you were low on grenades, you go right here and grab these. 20 free ones. I like to switch to fire eggs and enter.
Normally blue eggs, but my blue eggs are a little bit low, so I'm going to be doing this mini game with fire eggs. So shoot that clinker. Come down here. Clinker number two. Another one. Another one right there. Go through here. It's at this point I switch back to grenades. I strafe. Shoot. Shoot. Shoot him. Turn around. And shoot him. One more in this room. Stay strafing all the way to that one. Go down, see down, or see up to look down. Look down. There is a tint up in the ceiling. Clinker here. I kill the tint up for and shoot it in that corner. You can kill him if you're scared of him, otherwise shoot there, and shoot against that wall. And that will be all the clinkers. And I like to uh, cycle eggs so I don't get the cutscene. Or no cutscene, but the sound. As soon as we get this, we're going to, uh, as soon as we grab this jiggy, we're gonna pause and save and quit. Mash start, mash A. Now it's at this point where it's nice to have extra clockworks. So I'm going to be grabbing an extra clockwork here. Hopefully you guys aren't down a clockwork and have one right now. But warp to Wooded Hollow. And as soon as we get out of here, we're going to actually go over this way. To about right here. Switch to clockworks. And use a clockwork egg to get that Jinjo. Next is going to be another puzzle section, so pretty exciting. That was a pretty good puzzle. Could be a lot better. That could have been a godlike puzzle, but it wasn't. Mash R and B to get out of there and start another puzzle.
And we're going to reset here again. As soon as the uh, scene pops up, you can reset, or a little bit before. If you're feeling edgy, and we're gonna have to watch this whole thing again. <laughs> Mesh start. Mesh A. At this point, you should have almost no clockworks. Warp to Wasteland. Hold right out of the gate. Or hold left, see left. And we're heading right for CCL. We do not need any more notes because we are doing Shack Pack Skip. Right out of the bubble, hold down. Hold C right, and we're going to face this way, and now we're going to hold R. So when we land, we are facing the right way, and go directly for the door. C left, about this spot, and shoot a clockwork to get this Jinjo. Next we're going to be doing Cavern Jump. Where this is kind of kind of tricky sometimes, so you're gonna want to be jumping uh, right towards that that little corner, and you're gonna want to jump from this corner here. So I like to line up, and I missed. So if you make it, you land there, and you can go right up, and that's fine, not a problem. Which this jump will take some um, take some practice. But if you miss, you're just going to want to follow up like I do here. And all the way up. First thing I do when I split up as Solo Kazooie is jump over to this area over here, flutter, and take one damage. Take one damage, hopefully from fall. But um, if you don't take it from the fall, that's fine. Take damage from one of those guys, and you're going to line yourself up with the, the safe, and there's a pretty big gap again. But uh, you're just going to shoot a clockwork in there, grab the jiggy, and jump back towards the corner, and die. Next is uh, kind of a tricky section again, especially for newer runners. You want to jump to the left and over here. So since we're going to be getting into the pot of gold without using Mumbo, uh, there's a little bit of a trick to it. So the first thing we're going to do is hop on this button. The next thing we're going to do is use a combination of Wing Whack and Flap to get down to that area and use a flight pad right there and then Beak Bomb into the pot of gold. It's going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze. But you want to make sure that you have both of your honeycombs of health. It is very important, otherwise uh, you will not survive this trick. Jump, flutter, and flat. I like to make sure that B dies. And take off. Next, you're going to want to go into C up. Flutter all the way up and uh, use the skid right down into the hole. Hold Z when you fall off of that uh, the whole way down to ensure you don't take fall damage, otherwise you're going to have to do that 
old section, that other section again. So what we're going to do is shoot a blue egg in there. I like to uh, skid with Z to uh, bring a momentum, so crouch. And next we get to play the Pot of Gold minigame. Yes, I do fancy a go. So there's not really a good trick to this minigame besides getting good. And you only need 90 to beat it, but it's fast. The faster you do it, the faster you go, because the game ends as soon as you get the points. So now again, we're going to want to make sure we avoid the Cheeto page at all costs. We do not want the Cheeto page, otherwise you're going to watch a little cutscene that you don't want to see. No, we don't. And avoid that Cheeto page like the plague. And if you would like, you can take a little bit of extra health here for the fall. So we leave there. Jump. Flap. Wing whack to the platform. Get up. C up, and beak bomb under the bridge, let go, and step on the Kazooie plate, and enter the minigame. No, you don't want to hear about the problem, but you do want to help him. So you press A to this one. The first thing you're going to do is go over here and flip up to here. Grab that and those. Good stuff. Next, you want to get up on this bottle and get that Jinjo. Now we need to get 50 points as fast as we can. Alright, now that we have 50 points, I like to get in position right here and shoot a clockwork. No, we don't. And you're going to kill Kazooie with the clockwork. If you had one damage. Split there. Next, recombine as Banjo and Kazooie, and head out towards this longer path of water. Go up here. Try to stay on top of the rock like that and uh, Talon Torpedo. Break the rocket. As soon as you break it, cancel Talon Torpedo. We're just kind of mashing through this whole section.
mash B and R through the uh, dippy section. Next, you're going to want to backflip up. And take off on this flight pad. You can kill him if he's going to be in your way. And the first thing we're going to do is beak bomb right towards this red mumbo skull. Alright, so we got good skull. Which means, um, which, sh I I'll explain what this means, but, uh, if you didn't get it, if, if you have a different, if there's a different red Jinjo, if there's not a red Jinjo and you cannot hear Mumbo snoring, leave immediately. But because there is a red Jinjo and we hear Mumbo snoring or Minji snoring, we're able to do this. So I'm going to show you guys, there is an uber quick kill, but I'm just going to show you guys the quick kill. Because it is useful to know. So first thing you're going to do, and this is not the... So if he's in a bad spot like that, you're just going to want, you're just going to have to hit him where he's at, which is unfortunate. But otherwise you're going to want to keep hitting him while he's invulnerable and uh, be facing right where his wand is. So the, the main objective is to um, be next to him when he his iframes end and by his wand. Grab the Jiggy. And we're going to use the flight pad to fly, which is on this side, to fly to the cheese wedge. So this route that I'm doing uh, utilizes a thing called uh, cheese skew. So get up right here and put Kazooie facing exactly this direction in Talon Trot. And turn your camera and shoot a clockwork egg about here. Grab the Jinjo and exit. Mash B. And we will be skewed now. So the way to exit skew is to just walk. But you remain in skew if you move using jumps. So to do that, we're going to backflip up. And we're going to jump. And uh, because we're kind of reaching through like this, we're able to jump and rat tat rap to grab the jiggy. And once you've did that, you can just get in Talon Trot and leave. We don't need Skew anymore. Now, if you were to have gotten Bad Skull and that Red Jinjo and Mumbo wasn't snoring, we need to go fight Minji now. So to do that, you would grit on this flight pad and uh, Beak Bomb directly towards that Mumbo hut right here. But if not... We just go straight through. And we're going to go right to George. And right when we're at George, we're going to knock him off the ledge. And use his flight pad. to go directly to Wumba's. 
Next, we're going to be doing another clockwork shot right here. I like to stand right on the edge of this mat. Aim just above the Jinjo and mash B. So we cancel the Jinjo text with the Humba text. And enter the pool. Jump and exit out. So we're going to have to kill all the eyeball plants. Which the first one is right here. And I like to stay pretty low to the ground here. Or low to the uh, uh, stage in general. Because we are going to be coming up here. I zoom out the camera about now. And I hit this jelly castle about head on. You want to line up in the center of this hole. And hold B. And about here hold slightly up. And the B will clip in. Jump. Grab the jiggy. Turn around. Jump. And you'll be turned around and facing the exit. And now it's going to be the same principle here. Except it's going to be a little bit more tighter. Once about here. Hold up. And you'll clip right out. Now, like I said, look at the input display and you'll see that I'm just holding slightly up. Once out, fly up here. About here should be fine. You're going to want to hit that eyeball flower. Once it's hit, go back down. And you're going to be able to hit this one from pretty far up. So hit this one. A bit closer. Once he's hit, I go up for this eyeball. And I like to stay a little bit lower than the platform, because as soon as you hit it, you're going to get a little bit of a height boost. And with that height boost, I fly directly into the Jiggy. Go back up. And hit this target. Next, you're not on a timer anymore, but you're going to fly directly into the hornet hole right here. And now we just beat the minigame. As simple as that. Uh, I have my own... I, I do this just to uh, get a lot of them in line, wait for them to spawn. And then this minigame is much easier in third person. As soon as you hit... I like to wait to 60. Now where the Jiggy spawns is pretty unmistakable. Unmistakable. It's very easy to see where you have to stand. There's only a few honeycombs that jut out of the wall. The entrance, this really fat, tilted one, or this long and skinny one. You want to land about here, right on this black line. And right here is where the jiggy will spawn. As soon as it spawns and you mash the text, make sure you to mash start so you bring up the menu and can save and quit before, uh, before it prompts you to exit the beehive. Because you don't want to leave. Mash start. Starting now. Save and quit. So, now we're going to mash start, mash back to get back in the game. And our next stop is Hailfire Peaks, the last level of the run. Enter here, warp to clip top. Turn the camera to the right. And enter Hailfire Peaks.
as soon as you're here. Grab that. And we're gonna go directly up these steps. As soon as we're here, we're going to take a little bit of a damage boost. We're gonna jump. Get a Talon Trot in the lava. And then hop across. Hop right down. And jump across these fire ants. Switch to Banjo as fast as you can. And warp back below. Jump in the water. Aim for the top left corner of the uh, of Banjo's face here. So it spins you back to, around towards the middle. And as Banjo, you're still able to utilize Royston's quick swimming by pressing A and B together. <sighs> Next, depending on your health, you're going to want to... Um, it, because we do have two health, it is going to be faster to uh, jump back up here and use the warp. And switch with Kazooie. As Kazooie, Wing Whack. <laughs> Next, what you're going to want to do from here, and it is important to do it in this order, you're going to want to jump, Wing Whack, Flutter. Jump, Wing Whack, Flutter. Jump up and grab this uh, clockwork. Wing Whack, Flutter over here. Do not hit the train. And zoom your camera all the way in. And turn it to the right so that it's... And turn it to the right so that it hits this wall like this. Alright, we're gonna line Kazooie's tuft up with the wall. And we're going to be doing she or We're going to be doing uh, Slick Clip. So for this trick, we're going to want to select uh, Clockwork Egg. And as soon as you shoot it out, you're going to do three evenly spaced jumps. And on the third, I'm going to mash the stick to the right and then hold back up. Now watch the input display and listen to listen. It's very important for this part to listen to the Clockwork Egg's jumps as it goes. And so I landed right down where the Jiggy is. So if you mess up, it is very hard to tell how you messed up unless you are listening to the clockwork or to see how long you left the, the Jiggy. Uh, there should be some more tutorials online from GDO or uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask, ask anyone. Ask around. There's people that want to help. Um, but uh, that is kind of a, a basic overview of how that trick goes. So the next thing we're going to be doing is you fall right down here. You can do the quick slide like over. And you're going to want to jump into the lava and push into... Okay, so that's an example of what can go wrong and why this split is very difficult. So from this spot here, at least we get an extra clockwork out of it. Here you go. Do not push the train station switch. This is just a guide. Don't push the train station switch. From here, after you do the slick clip, you're going to want to fall straight down. Once you're down, wing whack and flutter right towards the Jinjo, and collect the Jinjo. As soon as you have the Jinjo, take damage and die. So after our little adventure with Kazooie doing a slick clip, we're going to go down here and use our slide to fall down on top of this little hut. And we're going to be doing Inside the Volcano.
Now the next trick we're coming up on is Shack Pack Skip. Which can be a little bit difficult. But it, um... Because you're this far into the run, you can't learn Shack Pack. You are already screwed. <laughs> uh, we did not grab enough notes throughout the run to get Shack Pack. So if you don't want to do Shack Pack Skip, or for some reason you don't like it, um, then go ahead and, I mean, you'll find a different note route. But it's not that bad with a little bit of practice, and if you're serious about the game, it's not that hard to do. So from here, we're going to jump, wing whack, flutter, jump, wing whack, flutter. And uh, we like to be about this spot, wing whack. Once you're about here, flat, wing whack, fall off, and cycle eggs. So, once you're back, recombine, and we're going to head towards this pond. This is also another very difficult trick in this run. What we're going to do. I'll, okay, first I'll kind of I'll talk about what I'm going to do, I'll do it, and then I'll explain a few things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize the slide to, as we're sliding, you can shoot an egg. Okay, we need we need Chili Billy to uh, not talk, not be doing this, so we'll wait until he's done. So I'm going to, with a clockwork selected, come on dude. With the clockwork selected, we're going to run towards this, and Banjo should be swimming. So Banjo is in the very hot water. I like to wait for this hand. If you're a beginner, it's probably really nice to wait for that. And we need to get to this loading zone before the clockwork timer runs out. I just made it and explode. Now Banjo is able to swim in this hot water, so you're going to want to sink, get the Jinjo, get the fish, and surface. So, at, so after he surfaces, uh, a couple of things I want to talk about are, uh, it is, you can go up here, and that's that's pretty fast as well. But, um, uh, so when you shoot the, uh, uh, the clockwork, you can do frame perfect jumps up this slope. But it is a little bit riskier, and uh, it uh, changes a few split timings. Alright, so now we're on the icy side, which is a pretty rough part of the run. Uh, we are under a time constraint, so we are going to try to get this pretty quickly. So first of all, we need to get in good position, which I like to... is a little bit touchy. Find a seam, and shoot a clockwork. 
Take damage as Banjo. Jump and Flutter. Now, since we're already missing the cycle, I'm going for a little bit safer shot down here. I land, make sure Clockworks are selected, and shoot above the Jinjo. And that'll get us the Jinjo. With a little bit more practice and stuff, you can learn about um, uh, uh, one cycle icy sides, but they are very rough, very time constrained, and um, takes a lot of practice to get in a run. So next, after you have that Jinjo, you're going to walk down the slope. Reminder, you don't need notes anymore. Have grenades selected. Uh, poop a grenade. Talk to Mildred. The grenade will explode on her. And grab this Jinjo. I'll get us another... Uh... And now we get to... Do another very difficult trick. Switch to Clockworks. We're going to wait for Chili Willy and we're going to pause at a specific time. So what I did there was I waited for the shot to hit and waited a little bit. And you're going to have to feel it out for yourself because there's not a perfect cue for it. And see, I paused. And if you can see this jiggy underneath, the, underneath where you would normally have to go to the train station, you can start holding Z. And then press return to game. And you'll buffer the shot down and it's easy to grab. Next, enter the igloo. And we're going to talk to Boggy. Have grenades selected. Mash text. And uh, the objective here is to die. I'm going to use some Clockworks. And we are done with Hellfire Peaks. We now have 70 Jiggies and we can exit the level. Normally you'll have a little bit more grenade power there to uh, finish out. Once you exit Hellfire Peaks... You're going to warp back to Wooded Hollow. And it's time to do our last set of puzzles. So now the game, there's not a lot of tricks left. It's just kind of beating the game. This is a really rough puzzle. Like time-wise for me at least. Yikes. That's a big yikes. So we do have to watch this cutscene, and we're going to have to finish one more puzzle that unlocks Grunty.
So mash B with our held. And 70 of 70 jiggies. Yikes. Oh, come on, dude. I tried that one, I thought. And there's our last puzzle. So I split here and now we have to hard reset one more time. So after that is done, uh, we have to watch most of this cutscene again, or not cutscene, opening scene. Mash start. And A. Alright, so we are going to go into the final stretch here. And we're going to warp to Quagmire. We're going to go to this other side of the pipe. Kill that guy. And grab the, uh, grab the boots. That guy has ended runs for me before. <laughs> uh... You don't hit him there, which you don't. If you don't hit him, it saves time. But if you don't hit him, he can also knock you into the pool and lose a bunch of health. Once you're at the top, enter. So kind of one more, one more trick to the run. Split up, jump, pack whack, jump. Jump, wing whack, fl flat, flutter, and now uh, instead of hitting the switch behind there, you're going to recombine and uh, stand pretty close to it, and we're going to use recoil damage to get through. So I wasn't quite close enough there, but uh, using that recoil damage, you're able to uh, clip through there. So. See that again? If I clip through like that, you just you can just clip through. Easy peasy. And enter the last Klungo fight. I don't remember what we have last. I think it might be Blue Potion. What's different about this fight is he will not give you a push because he leaves a different door that you, than you this time. So we're going to want to end up by that question mark on the last hit. And this is a really laggy fight. So I'm going to use leggy eggs. And it's always the last Klungo that comes out. Hmm. 
So I I took I I uh, just took a safe way to kill the Klunga there with a uh, blue potion, and we're just gonna t head toward the black exit. If you're at all confused, the uh, entrance is the white one, and you want to head through the black door. So now we watch this excruciating cutscene where Klungo walks down both ramps. And head towards the black exit. And now it's time for Tower of Tragedy. Now the strategy for this is to see as few questions as possible because picture questions lose a lot of time. Mash through the text. <laughs> so every time Grunty talks, you want to hold Z. So right now, hold Z. Once you have a considerable lead, you want to start. Uh, you want to start running out the timer with your answer. So I'll wait because I don't want to risk losing points here. So as you can see, the little timer on the right hand side. I'm gonna wait until it hits zero, and then answer, and then hold Z. Again, I don't know this answer by heart, so I'm going to wait. It is the Cave of Horrors. This is the only banjo tui category that does this. Uh, Tower of Tragedy. Because it is, it does take a long time. Big bad boiler beast. Cockerel. <laughs> well, apparently I didn't answer that, even though I thought I did. This is also a tactic you can start doing is uh, missing questions on purpose, so it runs even more time down. But I don't recommend it unless you're pretty far ahead. Like I am. And you don't need to win, you just need to not get last in the first round. I'm going to I'm going to let the timer run out. Hopefully they let it run down a little bit and then take a while to answer as well. Now I'm going to want to... At, right as the left timer runs I wanna, runs out, I want to end the minigame, is the goal. Strawberry isn't a color. That's all I'm saying. Perrier water. Very nice.
So this round again, you just have to beat Blabelda or Mangella. <clears throat> Every picture question loses a couple of seconds a pop, depending on uh, the picture question, but they all do lose time. Because you can see the clock stop on transition. So it's at 96, 95... And it does that on the beginning and the end, so it makes it kind of rough. Jolly's Bar and Bistro. An alien kid. In a bubble. <sighs> Grunty was able to sneak in one more picture question. So after you skip the text, the goal of this last one is just to get 15 points. But what I like to do is get to it as fast, get to uh, 18 as fast as I can, and wave it out. Big a boot. Sorry. Shorts. There are no picture questions in this. Squitters the spider. Squitter the spider. Is this news pack? Yeah. So once we have 18, I like to just write it out. There's nothing. You don't have to answer questions. They. You don't get subtracted. You just sit.
I wonder if you guys are going to be able to see all the jump cuts I do in this guide. It should flow really nicely. But there's probably, if you look close enough, you'll be able, or it might be blatantly obvious where I cut out. But I guess we'll see. So now that we're under 10 seconds, I'm going to... Uh, And wait for that horn. And once the horn's blown, then um, we can end the minigame. So the only thing we can do here is hold A and B to make the text go faster. And we're going to have a couple cutscenes here. Now, the uh, strategy I have for um, Hag 1 is a very beginner-friendly strategy, and I recommend if you're having problems fighting Hag 1 uh, my way, there's other ways to do it. We're going to mash start and B and R. and So now we've skip skipped those cutscenes. We're going to go into the Hag 1, Hag 1 fight. Definitely the easiest tag one fight and less risk least risky. If you are scared, you can grab that warp pad. Otherwise it's time for the final fight. I am gonna be going over a little bit of strategy. We don't need to collect items during this fight. So getting the clockworks isn't a priority. Um so we don't have to worry about that. It, the main thing is to keep stocked up on ice eggs. Make sure you have two clockwork eggs or more. It doesn't hurt to have more. And uh, having some blue eggs doesn't hurt either. But you do not, do not use Dingpot. It is, there is no reason to use Dingpot. Unless you have zero eggs of everything. And then even then you still shouldn't because you can collect eggs so quickly. L, R, and B to skip. So the first position we're going to be in is I'm going to get in Talon Trot and grab these eggs over here, some blue eggs. And I want to stand about here with ice eggs selected. Uh, get the question wrong by just pressing B. And I like to use R aim and strafe with the left and right C, C buttons. It makes it way easier if you use the strafing method. Gonna make sure I'm in good, good position here again. This is not good position. Gotta be it. make sure you're out on this side of Grunty. After Grunty's second hit, you're going to want to be in front of the nose of the uh, of Hag One, roll, and get on top of it, close to her. Take away the reticle, and he's she's going to shoot four shots. I jumped off pretty early there, but yeah, you want to get off so you can be in position to shoot her again. And on the second round, she's going to shoot six. Five eggs will always do it. 
This time around, do the same exact thing as before. Just get on top. Oh. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Alright, these longer sections are where you can collect eggs if you need them. So now is a good time to stock up on ice eggs and make sure you have enough clockworks for the fight. And she's going to go through two cycles of spinning and chasing you. Or chase, then spin. Chase, then spin. And afterwards, I'm going to be in a very specific position. So I'm going to be on this side, right here, ready to shoot, and be in a good position to shoot a clockwork egg after the uh, round. So I'm in a very specific spot here on the side. R aim up. I'm going to go over here a little bit and switch to Clockwork Eggs. Go into C up and shoot the Clockwork. I'm right there. That saves so much time if you are uh, aware of where you are when it's, going, when it's time to shoot the Clockwork Egg. And I think a lot of people lose a lot of time on Hag 1 because of that. Next we're going to have another section of running around and getting eggs. I like to make sure I have enough ice eggs. And uh, be watching where Hag 1 is because you want to be about where the back laser is. So I'm going to be aiming for somewhere about here and back pretty far. Now the reason I repositioned myself there was so I'm in a good spot for when Hag 1 is dead. I didn't get in any great spot initially. But now I should be in a pretty good spot where I'm far enough back where I'm going to be able to make some shots here. For this section I recommend just shooting with the blue eggs and as soon as you've hit her 10 times switch back to ice eggs. So here, shoot her with blue eggs again. Accept the double shot. And get in position. You're going to want a nice view of her and be a decent amount away from her hag one. Shoot her as fast as you can, down to 15. Hold A and B to make the text go faster, and we're going to shoot her as fast as we can again. On the last shot, pay attention to how I do it. So I'm going to be looking at her. I'm going to set up a strafe left and strafe all the way right and then fire, and that's the game. So how I did that on the last shot was as soon as I lined up, I was strafing left, so she shot over here, and then when I strafed right, I was extra distance away from it, because just strafing doesn't work. So you need to get extra difference, distance from being to the left to the right. Alternatively, you can shoot her before she even fires, but that is what I recommend. And that is the end of the run. So, um, yeah, uh, I hope this helps or at least like gives some people a baseline of like where to start. There's obviously other guides and stuff out there, but uh, I kind of want to do something on my own to show what I do. And there are some advanced tricks in this, but I believe that people with a little, not that much practice can get them. It's not that hard. And if you are having difficulties, uh, there's a lot of people in the Banjo 2 community who would love to help you. So that being said, um, 
yeah, shouts to everyone who helped me get to where I am with Banjo-Tooie. Uh, some of the people who helped me the most, especially when I was starting out, uh, Mumbo Token, um, uh, Garage Door Opener helped a lot when I was very, like, at the very beginning, he was at one of my first streams, taught me how to do, uh, quality control early, and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of other a lot of other people that deserve a shout out, but um, yes, it's uh, there, there's a lot of people who would still love to help you, uh, and if you ever have any questions or anything, feel free to ask me. Um, yeah, I'll have some stuff in the description below for other things, but other than that, uh, that kind of does it. Uh, I hope this is helpful, and I hope you guys can learn something from it. See you later.